Hello, my name is Michelle and you're watching From Surviving to Thriving. Today's video has to do with cognitive dissonance. I did a video on this topic a couple of years ago and I'm going to put the link up here for you to watch that. But I wanted to do a, another video, a short video on this topic because I think it's so important for victims of narcissistic abuse to know how to be able to identify if they are in fact suffering cognitive dissonance and to recognize why it's so damaging and, and what it results in. So how to be able to tell if you are suffering cognitive dissonance. Just to give you a brief definition, there's a lot of information out there as to what it, what it is, but basically cognitive has to do with your mind and dissonance has to do with two conflicting thoughts. So it's when your mind has two con conflicting thoughts, such as he loves me on one side and then on the other, why does he treat me so bad? He treats me awful. So those are two conflicting thoughts that a person often has when they're in a relationship with a narcissist. And the narcissist actually uh, causes you to have that. They know exactly how to keep you in that state of mind because it serves their benefit. So here's a couple of questions that you can ask yourself if you're wondering if you are going through cognitive or suffering cognitive dissonance. Okay, you can ask yourself, am I always confused? Do I always feel confused when there's a conflict with my partner? Am I always at a loss as to why we're even fighting? Is my mind telling me he loves me, but there's a part in my gut telling me that he doesn't? Now, I get a lot of emails from people uh, sharing their story. Uh, and here's a, another one you can ask yourself. It's one that I see a lot. And I, it's easy to identify for me because I remember going through the exact same thing. and. I see it when someone tells me about an abusive relationship and they're telling me these cruel things that their um, partner is, is doing with them or telling them or treating them in such a, way, a cruel way. And then after all of the abuse, they ask this question, am I wrong to be upset about that behavior? That to me is one of the biggest indicator that you are going through cognitive dissonance. And I'm going to explain why that happens. And, and it happened in my case as well. You see, cognitive dissonance, that, that confusion, that state of unreality where you really don't understand what in the world is going on, it doesn't feel good. No one wants to be in that state of mind. And so there's a part of us inside that automatically wants to make sense out of everything. And so often, one of the ways to make sense out of the cognitive dissonance or to minimize the uncomfortableness, I should say, of the cognitive dissonance is by changing your values and your beliefs. So I'm going to give an example. In one relationship with a narcissist that I had, um, if we were out in public, I would be completely ignored. It was as if I did not exist. If it was me, the narcissist, and a friend, the conversation he would make sure was only between him and the other party. No matter how hard I tried, he would just, you know, put up a wall and I couldn't even join the conversation. Well, you know, that's not nice and loving behavior. So in the beginning of the relationship, I would say, you know, that hurts my feelings when you do that. It hurts my feelings when you ignore me in public. Now, in the beginning, his response was, why would you think I would ignore you? I love you. I would never want to do that. I would never want to make you feel that. And he would say something like, you just have to jump in the conversation. Join yourself to me. You know, make yourself a part of it. Now, in my brain, I'm thinking I was doing that the whole time. And no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't do it. But it left me in that state of confusion. Like, well, well, is he really ignoring me? Maybe he's not. Maybe it's just me. And so I would try harder and harder. And eventually when I would bring it up, the next way he would respond, you know, I would say, look, I tried to jump in. You still shut me out all the time. He would be angry. 
the next time I brought it up, it was met with rage. And he would say something like, you know, you're so jealous. I can't even talk to another person. You make me feel so uncomfortable. I can't be myself. Um, you know, you're so critical of everything I do. The focus was thrown off of his behavior and I was made to feel blame for what was going on and it just creates this confusion. You start thinking, well, am I jealous? Am I, am I not letting him feel comfortable around people? And that's exactly what the narcissist wants you to do is to start getting confused and doubting yourself. What happens next is you begin to change your values and your beliefs to make sense out of it. In my case, towards the end of the relationship, I was ignored all the time. I never brought it up. It was as if it was it had become normal. And even instead of getting upset about it, I would just view it as as normal. So with time, what was going on was I was changing inside to make sense of the cognitive dissonance so that I didn't feel confused. I would start to say, well, you know, it's I'm making the, you know this a big deal. Um, I, I'm being too sensitive. And I would lower my values and my beliefs. The problem with that is you lose touch with what a healthy relationship looks like and that's why you start asking that question you know is it wrong that I'm upset that he ignored me is it does, does that make sense that that bothers me you don't even know you lose touch with what your original beliefs and values were because you drift so far from them it keeps you in a state of confusion it also keeps you from expecting anything from the narcissist and it puts you right where they want you in a state of mind that they can continue to confuse you and the sad part is is because you're actually changing your beliefs and values you're not just uh, staying quiet you're actually cognitive dissonance forces you to change your beliefs and your values so that when you're out of the relationship it's not like you bounce back to being yourself that some people wind up running back out of because it's just overwhelming um, to them so they they think that the narcissist they need the narcissist to get back to who they were for whatever reason um, it's one of the reasons why I wrote the PDF I miss me and I want me back leaving the relationship with the narcissist wasn't putting an end to everything it was actually only the first step towards healing it wasn't the final you know you don't leave and you're healed it's only the first step and it's because of all the changes that you've made inside in fact you're so far from who you were before the relationship that takes time to really get back to who you really were that's why cognitive dissonance is one of the narcissist's favorite tools to to kind of throw at their victims it keeps you in a state of confusion you lose sight of who you are what's right and wrong reality basically and they can spin it however they want. And here's the other uh, dangerous part of cognitive dissonance. When you're in that state of mind, it's a very uncomfortable place to be. And it, it's interesting to learn that that conflict that's going on inside of your brain, it activates areas of the brain that have to do with your personal identity and your emotional response to threats. So you're, when somebody goes to help you and point out, hey, look, you know, why does your husband always ignore you in public or why does he treat you this way? Guess what the response is of someone with cognitive dissonance? When a person is deeply enmeshed with cognitive dissonance, when somebody from the outside tries to help them, you would think that somebody saying to me, oh wow, you're, you know, why does he treat you like that in public? You would think that I would say something like, right, that's exactly, I, I feel the same way. Well, guess what? Your brain doesn't work that way. When you are entrenched in that cognitive dissonance, you wind up defending the person's behavior. You wind up feeding the reality that you've been fed to the person that's trying to help you. And it's one of the reasons why people that want to help victims of narcissistic abuse give up. It's one of those reasons because they try to help and the more they try to, to reach out to this person, the more they cling to the abuser. And a lot of that has to do with uh, another survival tactic that victims 
cling to and that's Stockholm Syndrome and that's something I can cover in a different video but the cognitive dissonance causes people to reject the hand that's reaching out to help them and pull them back into reality and that's why it's so dangerous and that's why the narcissist wants to keep you in that cognitive dissonance in fact if, if a person was to go back and say wow so and so was saying that you know you treat me such and such a way in in public and that it's not a good thing they will confuse the victim by saying something like you have to be careful with her she's just jealous you know she's divorced and she's jealous that you're still married and you know we have a great relationship and she just wants to tear that down yes more cognitive dissonance and once again it just keeps you in that state of mind so if you are wondering if you are are experiencing cognitive dissonance ask yourself those questions and then in order to break free of cognitive dissonance you really have to develop once again self-awareness you really have to pay attention to your feelings your thoughts and if you have a feeling and somebody else tries to change that feeling by telling you that no that's not rational or, or that's wrong start keeping track of it start writing down your feelings your experiences what happens how it makes you feel write it down in a place where the narcissist cannot find it because trust me if they find it you will wind up losing it but by keeping track of your feelings at those moments whether you share them with the narcissist or not that's the first step of you starting to pay attention to yourself once again and it's the only way you'll be able to break that cognitive dissonance